the next thing that we have to uh, consider with the design of an engine bearing is the eccentricity. Very important element to the operation of the bearing. The, the eccentricity is simply a gradual decrease in the oil, in, in the wall thickness of the bearing from the parting line, um, I'm sorry, from the crown to the parting line down to the relief area. This is designed into the part to uh, allow for rod bore distortion or uh, in, in the case of some weaker rods where the bear, uh, rod bore would pull in under, under a very high RPMs. Uh, the eccentricity is also there to help uh, pass oil through the bearing um, quickly so that it can be cooled down. Remember, 40% of an engine's uh, heat is, is cooled down by the oil. So we've got to get the oil through the bearing back into the uh, oiling system to be cooled down and for it to be recycled back through. The, another important thing about eccentricity is it helps promote the oil film wedge or the hydrodynamic oil film wedge. And our the values for eccentricity on high performance engines is between six tenths and one point two thousandths. Bearing assembly tolerances. These are the different tolerances that we must uh, adhere to when we are going to assemble a bearing that's manufactured for a particular size bore. Uh, we also have to have roundness of that bore. It has to be perfect uh, as we can get it. The alignment has to be good. The main, in case of main bearings, we have to have good alignment from one uh, main web to the other. The crankshaft pin should be perfectly aligned. Uh, proper crush height on the bearing uh, the shell, we have to torque the bearing in properly to uh, get the, the proper seat of the bearing into the bore and also to hold it in place during the engine operation. The bearing consistent wall size. This is very important to the build of an engine to maintain desired oil clearances. Uh, this also helps uh, in uh, eccentricity. We need uh, equal eccentricity on both sides of the uh, center line of the bearing. We also have to have surface finish that is very that is adequate to uh, prevent the oil film from being impeded. Crankcase mainboard tolerance. We can't be uh, out of out of size any more than a half a thousandth for high performance engines. Uh, we must have a minimum 40 to 60 micro inch on the surface finish of our bores when we hone those bores out. Uh, maximum amount of round for, for each bore is five tenths, a half a thousandth. And in recommendations on maximum misalignments, the two different bearings uh, have a different spec here because of the overlay involved with a tri-metal versus no overlay with a bimetal. Uh, tri-metal bearings, adjacent bores, do not need to be uh, out of alignment any more than a half a thousandths, and then for bimetal bearings, no more than one thousandths. Connected, connecting rod bore tolerance, bores have a diameter tolerance of half thousandths, uh, same as the mains, uh, surface finish same as the mains, 40 to 60 micro inch, out of roundness 5 tenths. <clears throat> Crankshaft journal tolerances. Main pins must be concentric. That is, all the main journals should be on the same plane, should be the same center line, uh, as perfect as the crank as you can get it. This helps with. Uh, when all the alignment is, is good, when the, from the main bores to the crankshaft, and then the bearings are made to be very consistent, then everything works better and has uh, and there's no interference. That's the, the key word here. Is we, we don't want to have any, any interference in the mating parts. Bearing crush height. This just shows how we uh, measure the crush height on the bearing. We put a bearing into a gauge block 
that matches the OD of the bearing. We put one in against the stop at 180, and then we measure uh, the height at the other end after we've applied a force uh, down on the other parting face. This force is uh, generally a, a formula that is that uh, is used to calculate the load based on the cross section, the thickness of the bearing, and also the length of the bearing. For one and a half to two and a half thousandths diameter bearings, our crush height values will be somewhere between two and four thousandths of an inch. So in the mean there would be three, basically three. At King though, we put a little extra height there because we need that extra seating to help hold the bearing into place to provide proper heat transfer. Our wall thickness is uh, it's common tolerance to produce bearings to a tolerance of plus or minus two and a half tenths for an overall five tenths range. That is, from one bearing shell to another, we could have uh, as much as a five tenths variation between wall thickness. This this uh, produces uh, inconsistent wall sizes, so it has a negative effect on for the engine builder when he's trying to build his clearances in that he. He's got bearings that are not consistent, and his uh, cranks are, say, on right on the right size and so forth. So he has this causes him to have to flip bearings around and move them in different places and so forth. But at King, we keep it more more um, consistent. Uh, we provide a uh, a tolerance of plus or minus one and a half tenths, which brings our overall range to three tenths. So in comparison. Three tenths for King, and then five tenths variation for other manufacturers. And at King, we call this our King's Bullseye Tolerance. And the benefit of the King's Bullseye Tolerance uh, is, of course, again, improved consistency of wall thickness. Uh, eccentricity is greatly improved. Uh, we, we have less taper, and also there's no need to match uh, bearings with fat or thin shafts. At King, we have uh, quite a quite an extensive quality control program where we uh, measure the different dimensions on a part. Uh, it's computer recorded. Computer lets us know when we need to make adjustments in our manufacturing to keep everything within tolerance. Okay, crankshaft journal surface roughness. Very important item here to to always maintain. Um, for highly loaded engines, this is very important because we're going to have higher peak peak loads. Um, we do not want the oil to be uh, 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 film to be compromised by the roughness of the surface. This is also going to give us uh, uh, good hydrodynamic lubrication, and it's almost going to be guaranteed if we have a good surface finish on our on our on our parts. We should have a minimum of four micro inch surface finish to uh, give us good uh, lubrication and also to provide a minimum oil film thickness. When we build an engine, we need to, uh, in order to maximize our our bottom end durability, we need to do these things. We need to determine the maximum RPMs and the cylinder pressures that our engine is going to run. We need to match the cranks, the rods, and the bearings for for this application. We need to uh, determine what our oil clearances are going to be set up on based on uh, different factors. Uh, also, uh, we can just use past experience to tell us what we need to do because we have been able to look at the part and we can see uh, how it's worn, uh, how it's uh, reacted to that particular clearance, and we say we just have to apply, you know, basically just imperial experience to it. Um, we need to choose a quality, multi-grade type uh, racing oil. Um, this is very important. The racing oils have today have uh, anti-friction uh, fighting additives that uh, are going to provide. Uh, uh, a good break-in of the oil of the of the mating parts during the first run of the engine, but it's going to fight friction the whole what the whole step of the way. Um, 
follow the uh, manufacturer's assembly uh, procedures and also maintain the engine properly during its uh, life cycle. Part selection, always choose lighter, rigid, small journal cranks and rods for less loading and power, uh, power gains. This also uh, lessens the bearing speed on the bearing when we have smaller diameters. Uh, choose a quality multi-grade formulated racing oil. And also we, we kind of look at synthetics as being a, as providing better lubrication because of the uh, molecular structure of the uh, the oil, it is the way it's made and uh, blended. Also choose bearings that have high fatigue strength to match the application and also that has consistent wall uh, sizes. And then lastly choose the rigid blocks that are going to maintain the bore alignment and uh, even under heavy loading. That concludes our seminar today here at King and I appreciate uh, your uh, interest in our product and I hope you uh, receive some good information from this uh, uh, presentation. For additional information from time to time you can visit the King Bearings website www.kingbearings.com